Hello and welcome back to some more F1 2020 and part 18 of my My Team Career Mode with Jordan GP Mercedes. Today we have the Japanese Grand Prix. If you are enjoying the series so far then make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below. It really does mean the world, all of your support so far in this series. Uh, and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already for daily sports and retro gaming content and in particular daily F1 2020 videos. So today, as I say, we've got the Japanese Grand Prix. This is a picture of the season so far. You can see uh, plenty of points finishes for us this year and, and some real big highlights in uh, Austria, Hungary, Italy, uh, of course, being very, 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 very uh, fun races and, and getting big holes of points. So we are on 55 at the moment, which is in 10th uh, place, I believe, ahead of Lando Norris uh, in um, 11th, and he had a wonderful start of the season, scoring points in the first six races, but uh, hasn't done particularly well since then, and, and signs have sort of uh, pulled away from him. I have been looking at the, the, the driver market uh, with a view to, to looking at who we might want next season, and I have actually watched four separate drivers so you can see uh, Sergio Perez I think he's a, a real good value for money uh, option 9 million is his uh, market value of course 86 rating uh, and obviously will improve with some of our facilities if we compare him with Nick De Vries you can see uh, he would get plus 10 on his uh, racecraft which would make him 92 and um, yeah uh, everything else uh, he would get a plus 12 on the on the experience which would make it 83 so i think that would be a real big boost for uh, sergio perez if he was to uh, come here signs as well i think is a is a very good option obviously a lot younger um lando norris is a pretty good option for the the british appeal and of course esteban ocon he has moved up in terms of his market value he was uh, originally seven million uh, a couple of episodes ago when we were looking he's moved up to nine million now so um but again a very good option a lot of pace a lot of race craft a lot of awareness but uh, his experience is what lets him down but of course that is something that will increase over the seasons but uh, yeah i just thought i'd keep you you guys in the loop kevin magnuson uh, a, a, a cheaper option that we could look at as well uh, so the, the upgrades, you'll be happy to know, uh, were very successful and we've got them on the car. So we've got the new um, ECU, which takes our engine up to pretty much Mercedes level, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, we also have bought the, uh, the ter tertiary uh, wing flaps, which has took our aerodynamics department to around about equal with uh, Racing Point and Renault. Um, and, and not too far behind being the fourth best um, aerodynamic package and our chassis we have uh, of course um, got the monocoque structure which has really took us away from Williams now and, and we are catching up in terms of our, our chassis and that's somewhere where I want to focus for the rest of the season I do want to find out where the um, the, the, the reset is going to be um, I am going to go to the race weekend because some... Oh, replace the gearbox, of course. We shall do that. Um, I will progress forward because maybe Carl will tell us in the uh, sort of motorhome that there's going to be an R&D reset. I'm not entirely sure how it works on this game, so we'll have a little look. Um, we're expecting it in two departments at the very least, though. I hope it's not going to be a full reset at all four departments. That would be a nightmare for us. Um, between now and the end of the season, trying to adapt all of these parts that we've been putting in, uh, putting such hard work in all year. But, uh, yeah, loading times aren't this game's forte, but there you go, there's nothing. Of note here it looks like a, a nice uh, clear weekend which is which is awesome and, and a relief uh, although I haven't said that in qualifying it may well rain um, sort of Q2 time towards the the start of Q3 as well so 
potentially could be a chance for us to, to qualify well again. We, we tend to do well in, in mixed conditions. But that's where we're going to leave it for this part of the video. So let's see how we get on in that wet qualifying session. Well, here we come up to the line then. It's been quite a poor lap, and it's a 130.8, which I think would be comfortably uh, slowest in the session, uh, to be honest with you. Really, really not impressed with that lap time at all. We might have enough fuel to come round for a second uh, go at it, but, uh, boy, we need to improve if we're going to be anywhere other than 22nd. Well, here we come up to the line. A much better lap time this time. It's a 1.28.5, which puts us just above uh, Nick de Vries uh, in 15th position. I can't really believe we've managed to pull that time out, but uh, I don't think there's much more in this car um, than that lap time that we've just produced. That was uh, mighty impressive, and you can see we're all over the place now as we're celebrating that fact and we should be through to Q2 hopefully well as you can see Nick de Vries actually went a little bit quicker and uh, we are out in Q1 then uh, 17th and 18th the Jordans qualify in the end which is a bit of a shame really I thought uh, I, I thought we'd done enough but uh, clearly not so let's hand over David Croft and Anthony Davidson much earlier than expected for today's Spanish Grand Prix. We come to you live today from the Mia Prefecture in the south of Japan's Honshu Island for a race that has seen many title deciders over the years. Some simple, some controversial, but all contributing to a legacy that makes the Japanese Grand Prix an indispensable stop in any Formula One season. A lap of this historic racetrack covers 3.6 miles, and it's the only time during the season that we race on a figure of eight racetrack. The drivers can expect some intense G-forces through the 18 corners on offer here as they experience some of the highest average apex speeds on the Formula One calendar and keep an eye out for overtakes going into the final chicane. And I'm joined once again by Anthony Davidson to bring you the lowdown for today's race. So, let's briefly discuss Lewis Hamilton. There's a real chance they could win the title today. So how do you think they'll handle the pressure? I think as long as they keep their mind on the task and not its historical significance, they'll be just fine. This is a race just like any other. You do the best you can and accept that sometimes things are going to happen outside of your control. If they can approach today with that attitude, the pressure shouldn't be a problem. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Valtteri Bottas will line up alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Vettel, Leclerc, Max Verstappen and Albon, Ricardo, Perez, Sainz and Lance Stroll, Ocon. Raikkonen, Lando Norris, and Giovinazzi, Kvyat, Gasly, Nick de Vries, and the captain, Grosjean, Magnussen, Russell, and Nicholas Latifi. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track and get this Grand Prix underway. So here we are, down on the track then, ready for uh, the Japanese Grand Prix. It's going to be... It's going to be tough, um, you know, I'm under no illusions about that. I think the best we can hope for is, is try to beat Nick De, Nick De Vries, and I, I'm not even sure we can do that today. Um, I, I think the car, although it's had huge upgrades in performance, this is still a track that we're going to struggle with, and... Uh, yeah, I think that was reflected in our qualifying session. So starting on the soft tyres, I might as well put a bit more fuel in just to try and get through the field. But need much better performance today if we're to do any better than uh, maintaining our grid slot. Yeah. 
launch map is good, but we need to learn the gears, so go into each one when you can. We're going to need some work on the brakes, so put some energy into them and warm the tires as well, please. So it's all going to be about keeping it clean, making sure that we can take any opportunities that arrive at our doorstep but you know, I think the, the thing that we're, we're, we're really struggling with this weekend is consistency and actually driving the racetrack no threat with, of with the, the same line every every lap it's it's very very challenging we've hit the freeze on the uh, formation lap so both of us will be disqualified from it there you go, I guess uh, we might as well skip the formation lap. So here we go, ready for the lights. Lights out, away we go, and what a start for Nick De Vries. Off the line, a little bit worse of a start for Pierre Gasly, and De Vries once again showing his true metal at the start of the race, showing his awareness uh, stat is well warranted around the outside and we hold it on the inside on Kvyat there so back up into 18th position let's go try and hold it here so De Vries is ahead people hitting the, the grass there we've held position on lap one that's not great but it's not terrible stay focused on the inside of Gasly should be able to easily make this move stick and we have done so up to 17th now and just behind our teammate and we would have took that if you'd offered us that at the start of the, the lap put a chance on our teammate here go down the inside and make the move stick Bit of a forceful move past Giovinazzi, but I think that's exactly what we have to do today if we are going to succeed. Great manoeuvre. You made it look easy. Well, as you can see, guys, uh, Gasly has got back past us and De Vries is right behind now. And I think I might just let him go. I'm trying to let him through. There he goes. Your teammate should not be passing you that easily. But that's exactly what's been happening to us in the last couple of laps. We just seem to have completely lost our pace and I think it's down to tyre temperatures. We just can't keep them under control which is such a shame. And even with the DRS struggling to close in on Nick and uh, a long day at the office for us today well we're coming into the pits on this lap as you can see Nick De Vries already three seconds ahead of us it's just not happening around here for us for whatever reason no real idea why but here we come into the pit lane And a five second penalty as well. Well, we're coming through and just ahead of Kevin Magnussen in the Haas. And, uh, well, we've gained a little bit of time on our teammate. Can we catch him up on this compound of tyres? Well, would you believe it, Valtteri Bottas is out once again of the Grand Prix. That is just so unfortunate. He has had so many retirements this season. And, uh, well, the championship has just slipped away from him. There he 
down here. It's up in the escape wall. Okay, That's clear. absolutely unbelievable that he has once again retired from this Grand Prix. I think Hamilton is going to waltz away with this victory. And that's just such a shame for Valtteri. This is your final lap, final lap of the race. Well, final lap of the race, and first of all, K Mag having a look down the inside, but. Uh, well, we blocked him off there. <laughs> we blocked him off there a little bit aggressively and uh, well, maybe a little bit naughty, but uh, I'm past caring today. And, and once again, it, the Japanese Grand Prix just seems to do horrible things to me. Gap to uh, it did last year as well. Seconds. Uh, in the ass car. And, uh, yeah, just really don't know why uh, the car seems so slow around here. The tank is empty. So Lewis Hamilton does come home and waltz away with the Japanese Grand Prix. Doesn't get the fastest lap point, though. Charles Leclerc currently has that, and unless somebody else in the top ten now takes that, Charles Leclerc will be... Getting the extra point today. There goes Gio. We are going to try and chuck it down the inside. Because why not? Well, that's why. Well, poor day at the office today. Whoa! Well, there's Latifi. Is Latifi going to beat us? I don't think he is. <laughs> Oh, well, we've got low fuel. <laughs> is he going to come up to the line and beat us? Yes, he is. So, absolutely horrendous day today. I'm so glad that that race is over. Oh. Pace was just so bad um, after a certain point and just could not keep the tyre temperatures down, no matter what I did. But there you go. Win under their belts. Well done to the team at Mercedes. Anthony, tell me, what was it that helped them achieve this success? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot, a well-earned victory for Mercedes. And after this round of the World Championship, Here's how things look in the driver's table. It's a great result for Lewis Hamilton, who moves further ahead at the top of the table. Now, let's discuss, Ant, who would you say is a contender for driver of the day? Difficult call, but I'd like to say Esteban Ocon. He's just so gifted at getting the most out of his tyres, and he showed that today. Let's give it to Esteban Ocon. That was a commanding performance today. Very impressive indeed. Let's move on to the constructors. The current championship leaders still hold top spot, that gap is getting smaller. All respect to the fans' choice, they fully deserve it. But I just feel that my pick had a little more on their plate, so their ability to keep a cool head and come through for such a strong finish made the difference, at least in my opinion. Well, Ants, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Well, there you go then. Uh, Lewis Hamilton closed in on that... Uh, seventh world title which would be absolutely amazing to equal the record from michael schumacher of course it was a a bad day at the office for us but uh well claire's what happened with your fuel strategy today uh can't be bothered answering her questions like silly questions today, it? there you go 
His car, mm, no. <laughs> Don't want to criticise the team. Sounds like there's some work to do back at the factory. Mm. Sounds like you've got some work on your questions, Claire. Eesh. But anyway. Um, yeah, we'll continue on and see if there is any sort of R&D um, boost. Uh, reset, sorry. 694k in the bank. And we'll head back towards our team headquarters. Four rounds to go, of course. USA, Mexico, Brazil and Abu Dhabi. I'm not envisaging that we're going to be massively strong at any of those four Grand Prix really maybe maybe in Austin and maybe in Mexico as well but we'll just have to see but uh, doesn't seem to be happening um, do I want to update the sponsors uh, maybe not maybe not at this point um, I can sort all that between episodes, but uh, yeah, um, a disappointing day today, and I, I'm I shouldn't get down about it. We've had a fantastic season, but I expected more after our upgrades, and uh, you know we we should be right up there with with McLaren, Alpha, and Renault, and and we just weren't this weekend. But uh, hopefully, things will improve next time out in. Uh, Texas so if you guys have enjoyed that then make sure you hit that thumbs up button down below really does help out means a lot to me as well subscribe to the channel for daily F1 2020 content and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day thanks for watching and goodbye